If someone said the River Sheaf in Sheffield was one of the most important rivers in the north of England, what would you think? Probably, how could a river less than 10 miles long and sometimes reduced to a trickle in a dry spell possibly be considered important? Well, let's take a look. In Old English, sheaf means a border, and a river obviously makes a perfect natural boundary. And down at the point where the sheaf joins the river Don, there used to be a small Anglo-Saxon settlement called Border Clearing, or Scharfeld, which we know today as Sheffield. So for a start, the sheaf gave Sheffield its name. But a border for what exactly? By the 9th century, the sheaf was part of the boundary between the ancient Saxon kingdoms of Mercia and Northumbria. Furthermore, up until 1913, the sheaf was part of the outer limits of the city of Sheffield and had also doubled up as part of the border between Yorkshire and Derbyshire for centuries. On the site of that small Anglo-Saxon settlement, in the early 12th century, a castle was built there by the Norman Lord of Hallamshire, William de Lovato, using the sheaf and the don as protection from attack from the north and the east. Whether he completed a moat all round the castle, we don't yet know, but certainly when in 1270 Thomas de Furnival built one of the largest stone castles in England on the site, a full moat using the waters of both the don and the sheaf was created as we can see in this illustration. In the middle of the 12th century, Beechief Abbey was built about a third of the way along the sheaf, overlooking the river in the Abbey Dale. The name Beechief is interesting. It is supposed to mean beautiful headland. The problem with that is that Beechief Abbey was situated in a valley with no headland in sight. Is it too much to suggest that chief is a corruption of sheaf? After all, the abbey used the river for its mill ponds and its water wheels, and the sheaf valley is certainly beautiful. We don't really need to clutch at such straws. By the 1860s, Sheffield was making 40% of the world's steel and was world famous for its cutlery, and the sheaf shares in that history. The Doomsday Book of 1086 listed over 5,000 water mills in England. Whether the sheaf had any in Saxon times is not certain, but certainly by the time Beechief Abbey was built, there were several mills along its length. They were originally used for grinding corn and cleaning woolen cloth, and eventually for the manufacture of cutlery, tools and agricultural implements. Sheffield's reputation had already spread by the late 14th century. Chaucer, for instance, mentions a Sheffield penknife in Canterbury Tales. The gradient of the river sheaf was perfect, and by the 18th century there were at least 30 mill ponds along the river, with water wheels providing power for grinding, forging and hammering iron, smelting lead, making paper, preparing woolen cloth and grinding corn. In fact, Sheffield was said to have more water mills in operation than any other part of Europe. In 1746, one of the most famous families in Sheffield industry, Tysaks, took over an old Beechief Abbey mill to make scythes. The water mills on the sheaf provided the power and the mill ponds provided fresh fish and wildfowl. An imaginary gallon of water could help power one water wheel to grind corn, then flow down to the next mill to help forge a scythe. It was industrial production on a grand and very environmentally friendly scale. Today the lower part of the sheaf seems to be missing, so where is it? When the first railways from the south were built in the 1840s, they missed out Sheffield because access was too difficult. Then, in 1870, Midland Railway built a 1.8 kilometre tunnel under Bradway and ran a line along the Sheaf Valley and into Sheffield Centre. Except, over centuries, the Sheaf had created a large area of ponds and marshes there. The names Pond Street, Pond Hill 
and Ponds Forge give that away. So a decision was made to reclaim the land by hemming in the sheaf and running it underground in culverts from Granville Square under what became the New Midland Station and on to meet the River Don at Blanc Street Bridge. And here the sheaf has one last surprise. Under the markets is one of the largest underground constructions in the UK. This huge section of tunnel was built to relieve pressure when both the sheaf and its tributary, the Porter, meet the River Don in flood. And it survived the floods of June 2007 well, even though Sheffield City Centre didn't.